Hey, welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to phase shift some trigonometric functions. And all that really means is a horizontal shift. We've talked about it before and a lot of the college algebra graphing, even the intermediate algebra graphing, how to shift left and right. And so that's what we're talking about with a phase shift. I'm going to show you exactly how to work with it. Um, I'm going to refer back to how we graph some trig functions without that phase shift, like the vertical shift and some key points. And that's about it. So let's talk about what sh phase shifting does. This is a horizontal shift along the x-axis. And we're going to see right away that that shift is going to be located right next to the x variable, which is really convenient. So x-axis stuff is right next to the x variable, which is nice. Now, if you remember anything about the horizontal shifting, the biggest thing that I can get you to know, these two pieces of information is, number one, it's opposite of the sign that you kind of want it to be. So we oftentimes want to see plus as right, and it's not. Adding next to your your uh, your input, adding next to your whatever your your input is like x is going to shift to the left on that input axis. So adding next to x shifts to the left on x. Subtracting next to x shifts to the right on x. So adding is left and uh, subtracting is to the right. So we got to make sure that we have that down. The second thing, it's right here, but it's a big deal is that if you're going to identify a phase shift, a horizontal shift, the coefficient of your x has to be 1. So almost always, we're going to be dividing first, like forcing this sort of factor. And I'm going to show you that in our very first example. And so we have some steps. Um, the, this kind of culminates all of our graphing of tree functions. Number one thing is we're going to look for whatever vertical shift we have. After that, we're going to identify a phase shift. Well, a phase shift you're going to have to make sure the coefficient of x is 1. That's typically what I do first. Then we're going to uh, take a look at our, our periods. So that's another reason why we want to divide before we do that. And lastly, we'll use our key points and graph this. So we're going to go right into an example right now. Remember, the only thing that is new right now is dealing with a horizontal shift. Plus means left, minus means right. It's called a phase shift for our trigonometric function. So let's take a look at that. If we have 3 sine of 2x minus pi, because, because we need that coefficient of x to be 1 to identify not only our period, but our phase shift, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the proper form. If you remember that, with graphing, the proper form is very important for us. We like these things in a certain order. Any constants being added, subtracted last, that's a vertical shift. Likewise, anything inside of our parentheses needs to have a coefficient of 1 next to our x. We're going to force this to divide 2. So how do we factor out a 2? Where do we put it? <laughs> Number one thing, don't factor out a 2 and put it there. That is not at all what's happening. So sine of this thing, that's an angle. And so we've got to leave that junk in those parentheses. We're going to factor out 2, but it's going to remain inside that function. We're basically just going to divide both terms by 2. And if we do that, 2x divided by 2 is just x, or 1x, and that's what we want. Now, we're not factoring a negative, so our sign isn't going to change, but notice that when you factor, you have to divide all of the terms upon which you're factoring. So 2x divided by 2 is x, but pi divided by 2 is pi over 2. And this helps us identify whatever that phase shift is. This is the right form. This is what we do first. Now we're going to do these steps when we graph it, but we want to make sure it's of the right form. This doesn't break our, our pattern here. We always make sure our functions are in the right form before we graph them. And that's what we've done. This is what we want. We want a factor if you have one, then a trig function, then an x with a, a coefficient of 1. If you factor, you factor. And lastly, anything added, subtracted, which you don't have. Now we're ready to start identifying all of these transformations. So we look for a vertical transformation first. We don't have one. A vertical shift would happen back there. There's nothing added or subtracted to our outputs, so we're not shifting up or down. Then we go ahead and look for a horizontal transformation. So whether we're phase shifting left or right. And this is where it's going to happen, is right here, with a coefficient of 1. That minus pi over 2 is a phase shift, a horizontal shift to the, get it, to the right pi over 2. If you have to write it out, you can write out that this is a phase shift right pi over 2. I typically just circle it and say right pi over 2.
Then what we do, after we've identified any vertical shift, any sort of a, a phase shift, is we draw those on our graph. And so we're going to take a moment to do that right now. Now we don't have this uh, this sort of a, a vertical shift, so I'm not going to be drawing this sort of new x y x axis, but we do have a phase shift. So I'm going to redraw a version of a y axis upon which we're going to base all of our stuff, our period and our key points. Now that we've shown where that phase shift is, so this right pi over two and said, okay, this is where this is what we're going to treat our y-axis as. Our key points are going to relate to that. Remember that our key points are based on whatever trig function you have. And for sine, that means that we have x intercepts at the ends and center of the period and key points at the quarters. Well, that's now going to be based on this is the start of your period. We've just phase shifted to the right. You treat this like the origin right now. And so we're going to deal with that. So we said, hey, no vertical shift. Yes, this horizontal phase shift to the right of pi over 2. Now we're going to look at our period and base it on where our period starts now, the shifted version of it. So our period is always take a look at your trig function, find the period. Sign says your period is 2 pi and divide by the coefficient of x. Well, in this case, we divided that out. So you're going to divide by whatever that number is, that 2. And this is going to have a period of pi. Now, here's what to do with that. Because this period is pi, but it no longer starts here, it starts here, this requires a little bit more work for us. So we knew that everything but tangent had this period that we can consider starting from, from zero, and that was really, really nice. Um, but now we've started to shift that. So here's what you do with that. When you find your period for whatever function you're trying to graph, and you've already phase shifted, which is why we do it in this order, take this phase shift add your period to it, and it will give you the end of your first period. That's what this means. So vertical shift, we didn't have one. Phase shift, we put it in the right form. We saw that. We show it first. So we shifted that over. We found our period. Awesome. Now, because we've already shown this phase shift, you know that your period is take your phase shift, whether you move right or left, just add your period to it. So I went to the right pi over 2. Great. Oh, that's not a problem. Now add your period of pi. Well, that's going to be 3 pi over 2. So I've done that. In general, this is how you figure out your first period. So you kind of, these things are going to cycle, of course. Um, so you figure out your first cycle here. Find your phase shift, add your period. Now, because we know how sine operates, it doesn't change the fact that this is a sine. We need to find the middle and the quarters. So we found the, the beginning and the end. Here's the middle. So the middle of this is going to be pi. And now we have our quarters. So I've shown that here. I've shown that, hey, we'd start at pi over 2. We'd end at 3 pi over 2. That's one period. The center is pi. The quarters are 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Now, it is very important to understand that this is based on sine. So I am teaching this with this idea that you know what sine looks like. This is not a vertical asymptote. This doesn't have any vertical asymptotes. It's still just a sine function. We just moved it. It's not that bad. And so a lot of the things that pop in our mind about sine are, are going to start happening right now, such as with sine, the x-intercepts happen at the ends and the center of our period. Well, we have that now. Our ends are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and the center is pi. Our quarters are where our peaks and valleys are, our local maxima, local minima. In fact, with sine, it's first quarter one and third quarter negative one. So we're gonna you're, we're gonna use that, and then we're gonna alter that if we have a factor there. Remember what that can do. That takes the outputs of our key points and multiplies them by whatever is right there. So we can grow this, shrink this, and reflect this. So first quarter comma one. third quarter comma negative one, and then we can multiply that. So these key points would be what they, what they are after a phase shift and a vertical shift if we didn't have any sort of a vertical stretch here, which we do. That vertical stretch is going to multiply our outputs. We get that right there. Should be the same number. You don't change that.
And so we're going to plot that. First quarter one, it changed, it grew. It, it, it did this vertical stretch into the first quarter comma three. Notice how I'm not saying three pi over four, even though that is where this point is, that's fine. I'm treating this like just the first quarter of the period that it is. This is how I usually graph these trig functions. It works out really nice as long as you remember what sine does. X intercepts at the ends and center, quarters of first quarter one, third quarter negative one. That's our key point, and then we can start modifying that. And now we're ready to graph. That's really all there is to it. I think the steps kind of speak for themselves. Is This isn't that bad if you understand everything but the phase shift. Not a big deal. The phase shift just puts one more aspect to it. It does make working with your period harder because you are having to add this. And then what I typically do is average these two to get my center, average these two to get here, and, and that's fine. You just add them together, divide by two. Your calculator do it very nicely. Uh, just don't use the pi on it. Do like one half. Three halves, middle of that is one. Well, it's one pi. One half and one, middle of that is three fourths. Well, two, that's three pi over four. Uh, one and three halves, at the middle of that is five fourths. That's five pi over four. And that, that's how I typically do it. Now we're ready to graph, we have our points. You've also noticed I've extended this. So if we need to go more than one cycle to the left, right, that's totally fine. So that's one cycle, and we can continue this. If we just added another pi, we'd get a complete other cycle on that. Half of that cycle, half of that period would be two pi. Where the first quarter would now be positive three, and this would be a third quarter of a previous cycle. and we could continue. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you're seeing the, the utility of these steps. Order is really important. We want to make sure that we have that. Uh, the order means in the proper form that your coefficient of x is one. That's the only way to properly identify both your period and your phase shift. So we do that first. Then we start our graphing steps. Vertical shift happens first. We show in the graph. Uh, horizontal shift or phase shift happens second. We show in the graph. Find your period. Add it. Always add it to your phase shift, and that will create your first period for you. After that, identify what trig function we're working with. It. I'm only going to show you sine and cosine. You can do this with all the other trig functions, but I think I've made it very clear that cosecant and secant are based on sine and cosine, so it's not bad. And then tangent and cotangent, you can also phase shift. So we deal with our period, add that to it, and then deal with your key points as the trig function that they relate to. So we're going to come back, we're going to do three more examples. All right, here we go. So we have another graph that we're, we're going to do right now. Uh, 4 cosine of 4x plus what, 3 pi, and parentheses, plus 1. Before we do anything about graphing, it's really important to get in the proper form. So the order is important, and the structure of it is important. So the 2 cosine looks fine. We, we want that first. We want the plus 1 last. It's great. That's our vertical shift. But inside the parentheses is very important. We need the coefficient of x to be one that identifies both the period for us and any sort of phase shift that we have. So we're going to factor out four right now. Four X divided by four is X and three pi divided by four is just three pi over four. And now I'm ready to go. If we had to identify all of our transformations and write them out, which I'm not going to show you, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to get these things graphed. But if you had to write them out, you would have a vertical shift of up one. You'd have a phase shift of left three pi over four. Probably should put that in there. Why left? Well, adding next to your input is left on your graph. So left on the input axis. So Adding 3 pi over 4, that's right next to the x, coefficient x is 1, that's fantastic. This is going to be left 3 pi over 4. We have a, let's see, taking our 2 pi and dividing by 4, that's going to horizontally compress us and vertically stretch us. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 different transformations here. You can have up to 5. You can have a vertical, a horizontal, horizontal stretch of compression, vertical stretch of compression, and a reflection if you have a negative out there. So you can have up to five of these transformations. We'll see that in one of our examples. Let's go ahead and start identifying what's going on here. Starting from step one, a vertical shift is at the end of your function. It affects the output. Output is this vertical axis. 
So that's going to be the shift up one. Next to your input, your x, is going to be the shift along the input axis, the x-axis. And it's opposite of what you want to think of it as. So this plus 3 pi over 4 is left 3 pi over 4. We're going to pause right there, and we're going to graph this right now. And the reason why we do is because we're about to do the period, and the period needs to be related to where this is shifted. So I'm going to graph this up 1. That's going to treat this like a new x-axis, and left 3 pi over 4. It's going to treat where we move to as a new y-axis. So hopefully it's natural to you that up 1 should be this vertical movement, and left, so plus 3 pi over 4, left 3 pi over 4 should give us this negative 3 pi over 4. Now, now why? Well, remember where cosine starts. Cosine's period, along with all of them a tangent, start at 0. So this left 3 pi over 4 is going to move us left to or negative 3 pi over 4. This is where we're going to start this graph. It's going to act like the beginning of our first period. Now what we're going to do is find our period. Because the period of cosine is 2 pi, and we're going to divide by this coefficient. This is going to give us a period of pi over 2. Now, notice what I was saying. I, I prefaced this so that it would make sense right now. The normal period is 2 pi. We have shortened it. We've horizontally compressed this. Now, here's what we're going to do. Take whatever your phase shift was, this horizontal shift to the left of 3 pi over 4, this negative 3 pi over 4. Take this, add that it will show you where the end of your first period is. So we're going to do that right now. So we took this negative 3 pi over 4, we added pi over 2, and we got negative pi over 4. This is the beginning and end of what we're treating as our first period. This distance is pi over 2. That is your period. Now we're going to find the center and the quarters of that because a lot of important things happen, all the important things happen at the ends, center and quarters of our period. So we have the ends now. Now we're going to do the center and quarters. Much like sine, this doesn't have any vertical asymptotes. This is cosine. It's, it's not a bad function. We know that x-intercepts happen to the quarters, so those are important to find. And then we have peaks at the beginning and a valley at the center, or local maxima at the beginning and end. And then at the center, we have this local minimum. Uh, eventually, we're going to start altering that, but that's how we start. So let's find the center and the quarters. So we've gone ahead and done that. If you needed to, use your calculator. Find the center by taking and averaging your start and your end of your period. So negative 3 fourths and negative 1 fourth average that, you're going to get negative 1 half. Negative 3 fourths and negative 1 half average that, you're going to get negative 5 eighths. Same thing here, negative 3 eighths. And then just do it without the pi and put the pi back. It's probably the easiest way to work with the fractions. And then realize what we're doing. Because this is based on where we shifted it to, so this left and this up shift, I've also rewritten these numbers on here. This is going to act like where your key points and how these key features of this graph relate. So when we talk about, hey, with cosine, your x-intercepts are at the quarters of your period. Well, that period's moved, hasn't it? It's moved left and it's moved up. And so we're going to relate our x-intercepts to the quarters of this particular period, not down here, up here. Now, of course, we're all smart enough to realize that, yes, those are no longer actually x-intercepts. Yeah, we get that. But what it does is helps us graph this. So they're, they're acting like x-intercepts on where we've shifted this to. I hope that makes sense to you. So we said vertical shift, we got it. Horizontal shift or phase shift, we've got it. We've now identified our period. We found the ends, the center, and the quarters. Those are the most important points for us. Now we're going to take a look at our key points. Remember with cosine, there are three key points that are not x-intercepts. There are the ends, which are positive 1, and the center, which is negative 1. So we have that here. We have our two ends of our period, negative 3 pi over 4 and negative pi over 4, comma, positive 1. We have a center at comma, negative 1. I'm just getting those numbers from here, here, and here. And I'm basing this on cosine originally has positive 1 at the ends and negative 1 at the center. That's what we've done. 
Now, any factor here can modify that. It can stretch it, it can compress it, and it can reflect it. And we're going to let that happen right now. Let's multiply by 2. Wow, I really hope you see the utility in showing this and this. It makes your graphing so much nicer because while these key points are not the actual points on our graph, we've shifted this around. What it's going to do is it's going to allow you to graph this very nicely. And then you can see what those points are. It's not that bad, um, but they have been shifted. It's just a really nice graphing tool. So let's go ahead and do that. Because these relate to these actual values, it's pretty nice. Here's negative 3 pi over 4. This acts like your 0. So negative 3 pi over 4 comma 2 is up 2. So I have negative 3 pi over 4, 2, and negative pi over 4, 2. That's the ends and positive 2, in this case, because we multiplied. And now our center is negative pi over 2, comma, negative 2, but it's from here, not here, from here, not whatever there, but here, down 2. So this would be negative pi over 2, comma, negative 2. Put us right there. And so we're ready to graph our first period. Now, you can continue this, and you've seen this if, uh, right now. If I continue my, my period here, the next quarter would be negative pi over 8, and the next center would be this 0. That's where that would be. And to the left, the, the next third quarter would be whatever this is, and then the next half would be whatever this is, which would be negative pi. And we can graph this. So our, our first period really shifted to right here. I just extended it on here and here. And you keep going by doing this. If you wanted another cycle, just keep on adding your period every time. So we do a vertical and a horizontal shift. We show that. Find your period. Add it to your phase shift. You can keep on adding and subtracting as many times as you want in order to find out as many cycles as you like. Then find ends, center, quarters. Repeat those every period, and your key points will be based on that and will also repeat, which makes it very convenient once you get the, the idea down. The last time I'm going to mention it is, please remember, even though the, the x-intercepts of the original cosine function are at the quarters, these are not actual x-intercepts, are they? Because they've been shifted. Our x-intercepts are somewhere here. I don't know what they are. This is certainly not it. They're somewhere between here. And so I wanted to make that, that just really clear for you um, that when we start shifting things, we also shift x-intercepts, which is the whole basis of my technique that I'm showing you. So I hope it's making sense. Let's come back and let's do two more. Let's get going on another, another example. So we've got y equals negative 3 sine of negative 2, negative, interesting, negative 2x plus pi over 2, nothing added or subtracted afterwards. Form is incredibly important for trigonometric functions. So put it in the proper form. Now, before we could jump into any conclusions going, oh my gosh, that negative does something, that negative does something, that's crazy. Um, watch what happens and why I'm telling you about form first. Because we have to have the coefficient of x positive and 1 in order to identify both the period and the phase shift. We do that first, and you're going to see something happen in this when we start factoring out that negative 2. So when we do, and this is the real important reason why we don't just memorize formulas, why we understand about the form and then look at what's actually happening. Because when we divide out negative 2, it's going to change signs. That's not a shift to the left. It's going to end up being a shift to the right. So negative 2x divided by negative 2 is positive x. This is what we want to identify both the period and to identify any sort of phase shift. Let's see, positive pi over 2 divided by negative 2 is negative pi over 4. This is the proper form. We can verify that that's true, negative 2x plus pi over 2, that's fine. But this is the proper form to identify at least the phase shift. 
Now, what about the, the period? This is not the proper form yet for the period. Why? Well, because really what you should be doing is dividing your period by a positive number. You go, wait a minute, that's a negative. I thought you could just pull out negatives. You can't. Listen carefully, this is the biggest deal right now, is that that negative, while you can't put in front of the sign because you cannot move that negative outside of the argument of the sign function, you can use the fact, and this is a significant difference, that sign is an odd function. What's that mean? Odd functions mean this. You can change the sign of your input if you change the sign of your output. In other words, if you change the sign of your argument of your input of your function, in this case sign, then just make the sign in front of it negative, or change the sign in front of it in this case. So odd functions, sign being odd says, and if you remember this, we did stuff like this. Remember how sine of negative pi over four, we said, hey, that's an odd function. This would be the same as negative sine of positive pi over four. Doing to the fact that this is an odd function. Please listen carefully again. This last time I'm say it is that you are not simply moving the negative up front. In fact, with cosine, cosine is an even function. You just make it positive because with odds, opposite inputs give you opposite outputs. Evens, opposite inputs give you the same equal outputs. Even is equal outputs. So the long story made short is, man, this is great. Sign's an odd function. All we have to do to change that sign is change that sign. And that's what we're going to do right now because it's an odd function. You could do a little bit of more work here. If it looks like magic to you, we could say that this would be negative, negative three sine, but the idea is an opposite input, which is exactly what this is, will yield an opposite output, which is exactly what we've shown. This is due to the fact that sine's an odd function. Now, this is much nicer to identify everything that we want to about this. So we're gonna go through and follow our four steps. The first one is, do we have a vertical shift? We don't, there's nothing added or subtracted. Do we have a phase shift? Yeah, we do, it's right there, and notice that that is a right pi over four. So we've shown this phase shift, a horizontal shift of right pi over four. Uh, we're not moving up or down, so that's fine, just right there. So this acts like our x-axis and it is our x-axis. This acts like our y-axis, it's been shifted. Now we find our period. Because sine has an original period of two pi, we divide by our coefficient. Notice it's so nice to divide by positive numbers. You don't have to think about adding a negative here. That's why we use the oddness for sine and evenness for cosine to alter whatever that is if it's negative. It's not that bad and it saves us a lot of headache. This is gonna give us just pi. Now what we do with that, take that pi, add it to your phase shift. Now if we haven't phase shifted, well that would have been zero. We would have got whatever that is, pi. Um, with tangent, we would have started not at zero, but at negative pi over two. With this, because we shifted this to the right, pi over four, we're gonna take pi over four, your phase shift, add your period. That's how we always do this, isn't it? You take your start of your period and you add your period to it. Tangent does that, cotangent, all of them do that. So pi over four plus pi is five pi over four. That really is a period of pi. Now we're gonna find the center and the quarters. So we got phase shift, we added the period, we found the center and the quarters. Hopefully it makes sense on how we do that. If you want to, you can average them if it doesn't make sense in your head. Uh, but one fourth plus five fourths divided by two is three fourths, so three pi over four. Then do the same thing here and here, and you got the appropriate ends, center, and quarters. Now look back at the function that we're dealing with. We're dealing with sine. Think of what sine does. Sine has x-intercepts at the ends and center of your period. That is shifted, but it still relates. So x-intercepts at the ends and center. The key points of first quarter one and third quarter negative one might be changed, but we want to make sure we write them down. So first quarter is pi over two comma one originally. Now we might change that, but originally it's pi over two comma one. Or first quarter comma one may be a better way to think of that. 
and third quarter common negative one. That's what sine does. Now, aren't you glad that we did this form before we started doing our key points? This is why this order is incredibly important. It's gonna lead you down the right road, the right road to success. So now that we have our key points as they are and our, our form correct, this is not a reflection. This was sort of a, a using the oddness to change that sign and it's not going to reflect this. And so we have this positive three as our factor. That's gonna be a vertical stretch. There's only, let's see, one, two, there's three transformations here. There's a shift to the right, phase shift right, pi over four. There is a horizontal compression, two pi into pi, and there's a vertical stretch, one times three, so one into three. Now we're ready to graph, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna go up, down, and up. I haven't gone any further that way. I'm gonna show you that zero would act like a third quarter of the previous period. Kind of missed that one, just to make the point bigger. It looks okay, she looks like junk. Hopefully you get the idea that that, that point is a little bit off, um, but that's, that's about what this function would look like. This would be at least your key points. You'd have the shape of it, the period of it, you could do several cycles from it. I hope that's making sense. We're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what would happen if that was a cosine and deal with a very awkward period. So hang on for that. Okay, last one, and we're gonna go through it very quickly. I'm actually gonna shortcut some of the key, key points because I'm gonna show you how to do that just from the period. Probably have already figured that out. If not, it'll be pretty clear for you. So let's take a look at two cosine negative two pi x minus four plus three. That's crazy. Um, form is incredibly important. Let's put it in the right form. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this so that, this looks pretty good, but that our coefficient of x is positive one. We're gonna have to divide out negative two pi. Now when we do that, negative two pi x divided by negative two pi is positive x, that's great. Negative four divided by negative two pi is not great. That's positive, okay. Four divided by two pi is two over pi. Now we're ready to take a look at our shifting, but that is really nasty. Two over pi is going to be a shift to the left of two divided by pi. Well, that's not exactly negative one. It's not exactly easy to, it's not exactly anything that we can represent as a decimal in fact, um, but you might have your calculator out handy to see where that actually is. So let's go through this and let's identify what our shifts are. But before we do that, if you remember the last example, that negative on sine created a negative or a change of sign for our function. Cosine is an even function. That means opposite inputs give you the same output. What it means is that cosine of any negative angle is the same as cosine of the positive version of that angle. In other words, evenness means these are the same. Well, that means I can change that sign and get the same thing. I don't know if it makes it any better, but at least we don't have to deal with that na negative. Now we can identify what our shifts are. This has a vertical shift of up three, and I've actually shown that, one, two, three. A vertical shift of up three. This has a horizontal shift of left two over pi. And we're gonna show that now. So my vertical shift is up three and then left two over pi. So I've estimated that about where it is on the x-axis and related some points according to that. You can see that in a second. Now we figure out what our period is. So the period says, take your two pi, your original period for cosine, divide by your coefficient, which is also two pi. 
and you're going to get one. Now add that to whatever your phase shift is. Wait a second. Negative 2 pi plus 1 is 1 minus 2 pi. Figure out where that is in relation to this. Is it positive? Is it negative? It turns out that if I add negative 2 over pi plus 1, I get 1 minus 2 over pi. That's about 0.36. Then we figure out the center and the quarters, which isn't really all that bad because if my period is 1, check it out. This is a period of 1. 1 minus 2 pi minus negative 2 pi is 1. This is a period of 1. Well, what's half of 1? 1 half. What's a quarter of 1? Quarter. What's 3 quarters of 1? 3 quarters. And then just subtract 2 over pi from each of those. That's the easy way to find out your ends, your center, in your quarters. From here, we just need to identify what cosine does. Cosine has the x-intercepts at the quarters. At the ends and center, you have 1, 1, and negative 1. Just multiply it because you have them right on the board. Here's your ends, here's your center. You can literally just say from here, multiply 1 by that, that number right there. So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times, this would be negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And at your end, your end is normally 1. Multiply it by that number. So at your end, 1 times 2 gives you positive 2. I just wanted to show you a quick way to graph these exceptionally fast uh, with remembering that cosine, your ends are with your quarters, and that, they're sorry, your uh, x intercepts are at your quarters, and that your key points are n's comma 1, well, multiply that. If it had been negative 2, you'd reflect it. And your center is uh, negative 1, multiply that, and you get wherever your key points end up being. That, that's without showing you these awkward key points, comma 1, and negative 1, and then multiplying. So I hope it makes sense. I hope I've shown you phase shifting to your satisfaction. Remember, there are some things where you can go backwards if I give you a phase shift and um, an amplitude. We should be able to go backwards on that, uh, but it doesn't happen very often. So I'll see you for another video. We start talking about inverses. Have a great day.